Now let's continue our look at issues that matter to Nigerians ahead of the upcoming presidential election in 2023. Today we're examining a new national poll that's gauging the mood of the nation as the ballot draws near. It was conducted by the Africa Polling Institute and Business Day newspaper and it's revealed some interesting results. It shows that 92% of respondents are looking forward to voting in 2023, so not uh, much voter apathy so far. 80% have already collected their PVCs and just 13% are still waiting to collect them. Instructively, 67% do not consider religion a factor in deciding who should lead Nigeria. The economy and insecurity are the top issues for voters and 62% trust the Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct a hitch-free election in 2023. So how much of a key measure of the mood of the nation is this survey as Nigerians gear up for the 2023 general election? With more of this, let's hear now from one of the people behind that survey. Dr. Olubenga Ogunfemun is Director of Research at the Africa Polling Institute and he joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank um, you. From the point of view of your survey yes. and what it reveals, um, how interesting do you think the lead up to the 2023 election is? It is very interesting because Nigerians now are more um, inclined to participating fully in the next Nigerian elections, basically because they found of the situation of things in the country. Everybody is affected, both the young and the old, economically they're affected. In terms of security, they are affected. In terms of um, getting food on the table, they are affected. The peace of mind of Nigerians are affected. So there's this general paradigm shift in the country that we must take matters into our hands. No more laid back perception of uh, election purposes now. The people are now driven to make sure that they participate fully. So no sense of voter apathy, at least so far. No, none whatsoever. Interestingly, a lot of them have, are eager and they've gotten themselves um, their PVCs. About 80% of the sample size have gotten their PVCs. About 13% of, of them have registered. Some are waiting, some are doing the transfer, all in the uh, hope of getting their votes um, uh, count. And they are interested in making sure that every one of them mm. participates fully in the coming elections. And, and in terms of the period, because we, we need to know whether this is a, a slightly older survey that's get, going out of date. I mean, it, it, the period that you conducted this survey overlapped into July, didn't it? Yes, we, uh, the uh, survey was conducted uh, between the 18th of July mm. and 22nd of July. And it's a partnership with uh, Business Day and we feel it's a responsibility towards Nigerians to, to gauge uh, the feelings of Nigerians and have uh, Nigerians speak their minds about the next uh, elections that are coming up in, in 2023. Interestingly, we saw that uh, participation in the last election in Oshun State, where they came out to massively uh, to conduct their, their civic responsibility and make sure that not only did they cast their vote, but that their vote actually did count. Yes, that, that's a very uh, interesting point, and that, that's a hopeful sign, isn't it? I it mean, is. but, but the, the people you surveyed, did you get the sense that beyond this general eagerness to yes. participate in the election yes. in 2023 and to vote, did you get the sense that they really want a break from that old political class um, representation or, or more of the same, just with a different face? Well, we didn't really ask them their, who they were going to vote, mm. where their interest would lie. But if at all they are willing to vote, they have a high willingness of participating in the elections. And this drive is mainly because of the situation of things in the country. People are no longer willing to take the back seat. Mm. Uh, on, on social media, there's this massive movement of the youth in particular. And interestingly enough, the uh, uh, poor, uh, the information released by INEC says um, the youths mainly are the major mm. force driving this um, PVC collection and willingness to vote as we have found that. So the, the need for total participation to make sure that things change 
the mantra is not just change. They want to see that change come into effect. It is their future. It is their all, future. People I mean, are passionate about mm. making that change. They want to contribute their own quota and to make sure that when that change comes to pass, they could say confidently that I also participated in making that happen. Yeah, I mean, surveys like yours, I think, are very important because it, it gives us an indication, a scientific indication, indication of, what's going to happen. of where things are going. So, so what did they say to you? Uh, they were, I mean, I don't know if, you, if, it, if, it, um, if it went that far, but what did they say to you they were looking for in candidates for the 2023 election? Because from the unscientific person on the street interviews that mm -hmm. we have done, people seem to be looking more so this time for integrity, honesty, competency, someone who has a vision and practical solutions, can lead by example, and crucially, can unite a bitterly divided country. Yes, it's not too far from that actually, because the people you have uh, spoken to are also Nigerians. Mm. And uh, we asked them a particular question that what are the three most important things that we expect from the next president of, of Nigeria? And three key uh, variables came out. The first one, which is about 30%, is the capacity and competence to revive the economy. Every Nigerian knows as of today what the situation of things are in the country. Getting your fuel, going to the market, increase prices, power supply not being... The economy drives every mm. nation. And 30% of, of them are saying that capacity and confidence of that leader is key. The second one is commitment to tackling insecurity. We know the situation of things. We know how insecure the country is at the moment. A man or a woman who will be the president must have the capacity and the competence to change and drive the economy, must have the capacity and competence and commitment to make sure that Nigerians' lives and properties are totally secured. And the third one is the commitment of promoting good governance and cohesion. Interestingly, last year we ran a, uh, a survey of over 5,000 sample size called the Nigerian Social Cohesion Survey. And we found that, that the Nigerian Social Cohesion Index is about 42.4%. Nigeria is not socially cohesive. Nigerians see themselves more from their ethnic stock. Yes, I think I remember that survey because yeah. I think I discussed it with your, the, the, your director, exactly. director yeah, uh, Belly Hu. So Nigerians have found that, that. We found that, that Nigerians is not a socially cohesive mm. country. And that was way back then. But now it's even gone more beyond that. Nigerians see themselves first from their ethnic point of view. They see themselves first from their religious point of view before nationhood comes in. Forget about all the um, lyrics all over the place that uh, nation building patriotism Nigerians are back to their tents. Mm. So, so there is a sense that there's been a lot of division in recent years. There has been. There has been. Progressively there has been. And it's, it's, it's about the fist in the mouth because every part mm. of the country is affected. There is no place that is devoid of this lack of cohesion, lack of this cohesiveness. I'm a Yoruba man, I'm an Hausa man, I'm an Igbo man comes first before mm. nationhood. The unifying factor, when, uh, what's her name now, um, Toby Amosan won, you could see Nigerians say, ah, now nah, it is Nigeria. But the next, in the same breath, you're hearing, ah, she's from the Southwest, ah, she's Yoruba. Uh, even from amongst the Yorubas, you're hearing, she's from Jebu, <laughs> she's not. So that's cohesiveness yes, as a yes. nation. It's lacking. And, and that's a very important thing. It is isn't very it? important because so many factors have gone mm. into it. So many factors have gone into it. So, so that's one of the things they want their leader to be able to do. But, but what did they put as the top priority for the next leader? A leader that can drive that economy. Right. So the economy, economy was is the first yeah, one. All important. All important at 30%. And closely to that is the issue of insecurity at 29%. And these two from the bedrock of what Nigerians want. Whoever is going to be the president, whoever will be the leaders in the National Assembly, whoever is going to be the governors of the state or members of the state houses of Nigeria, they must have the capacity to drive this change from the national down to the states, down to the local government, all across Nigerians want that change. And mm. not just you come and just 
blow your trumpet that I will do this, I will do this. They want to see that level of competence. They want to engage you in discussion. They want to see what you have to offer. Gone are the days when you just come and wave your hand and people fall like the anointing. No, they want to see the effect that you are going to mm. bring to bear on nationhood. And, and looking at this latest survey, as well as the social cohesion survey yes. that you did, wh which is obviously very important as a way of reading what's going on in this country, d does wanting a break with the past that you were talking about there, yes. wanting this change and wanting integrity, does yes. that appear to favor candidates who are outsiders from the business as usual politicians or, or you didn't you didn't go that far well we didn't ask directly but there's an inference because when you ask them the thing you want they will say we don't want somebody that will just come and talk mm. and will not be able to do we want somebody that can talk and somebody that can do they want a departure like you said from the past and when they talk about the past, they're talking about the past that they have seen, mm. experiences that have born to bear on their daily lives, that these are the same old people. We don't want to recycle them. We want people that will bring that change. We want to see new faces of competence. We don't want to recycle the whole thing and they come and we're not, you know, they're not going to be able to tell us what we, are, what we want to hear. Mm. Not only we want to want to hear, but they say it, they do it. We see them make a, 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 the efforts to do it and we see the people around and they pull around to be able to do it. They don't want people that will come and talk. Right. But I guess what's interesting about, well, another interesting aspect about this is, is how long this desire to see people, you know, new people and, you know, new blood and capable blood come in, how long that is going to last when matched against the economic realities that you were talking about because you mentioned that the economy is absolutely paramount so that, that yeah. means that it's hitting them where their pockets yeah. are food on the table and all that and yeah. and that's basic stuff that one has to satisfy if one is going to be even able absolutely. to get out there and absolutely. vote and i'm wondering whether or not at some point that is going to take over well um they are not keen on who you are as your name where you come from your religion they want that change they want something that is going to affect them right positively not rhetorics they've gone beyond rhetorics now you're not going to stand and campaign and tell them i'm going to build you roads i'm going to build you hospitals no you are going to tell them every step of the way how they are going to do it. They don't want to know who, what you want to do, but mm. how you are going to do what you are they going to promise. They don't want empty promises. They don't want empty promises. They want their pockets filled. And there was another interesting thing that emerged from your survey, which you mentioned just there, and that's the issue of religion. Yes. 67% of Nigerians say they are not interested in what religion the, the president is going to pro uh, um, practice. They want somebody that is going to do the job, mm. irrespective of the religion of the person. Religion is not a factor. We have the issue of the Muslim Muslim ticket. Yeah, I was just going to say that that will be a big boost for for the APC party. Uh, well, I mean, you know, if they go by well, by your survey there. Well, it's it's that's what we found out. They are not interested mm. in religion, but the capacity of the person that is going to be the president. If the person is going to be a, somebody that is going to turn their tide around, somebody that is going to do the best mm. of his efforts, somebody that they are going to see to wanting to do the best, they are going to kill behind that person. But the religion, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a traditional, it is it's, not it's, it's secondary, it's secondary or tertiary. Them, it's secondary. Yeah. They've gotten to the level where we want positive change. Well, that, that sounds like political right. maturity, doesn't it? It is political maturity. It is economic maturity. Mm. It is really um, security maturity, if you could put it that way. They are tired. Nigerians are tired. Nigerians are feeling the pain, excruciating pain, mm. if I may add. And whoever is going to come next as the president is not somebody that is going to come based on rhetorics, mm. tell them this and that. It must be somebody that they can see the competence a mile away that will affect their lives positively. And there is a delicate balance, isn't there, between wanting that break with the past and presumably wanting a degree of responsibility and proven experience for what is an extremely challenging job. So whilst they're saying we want a break from the past, I'm presuming that they also want someone who's experienced 
which does not completely eliminate that break from the past. Well, uh, interestingly enough, whoever is going to be the Nigeria next president of Nigeria has his or has Jeff Cotton because of the situation the country is in now. So that experience so it definitely is going to be needed. But that capacity, the, the, the willingness to do, that capacity to be able to affect the economy, the, the capacity and commitment to change the narrative of the security issues we are having is more important to them. You may not have the experience, but if you have the capacity, if you have the commitment, if you are, if you are bold enough mm. to make the necessary sacrifices and changes, then experience will come along the line. After all, the person is not going to work alone anyway. Yeah. So if you don't have that 100% experience, the people you are going to pull around you most certainly will have that experience. And we always forget one thing, that yes. most people who get into the presidency have never been president before. before well, exactly. in fact, it's very rare, except some of people in Nigeria who've been sort of military heads of state. But it's very rare in most countries, you know, to find someone coming into that position who's been in that position before. I mean, it may happen with Donald Trump. I don't know. Well but, but, but everywhere else, um, you, you just don't get that. But is there any sense f from your survey of, of who's got the best odds of winning or who's got the odds stacked against them? Uh, we, we, we didn't go that far. We didn't ask them for their preference or preferences. But from inference from the poll, mm. capacity is important. Mm. And when we say capacity, we are talking about intellect, we are talking about health, we are talking about ability to do everything that in office, mm. that rigorous office of being the president of this country is going to demand from such a person. So all the, all the presidential aspirants who are out there now, key thing is they must be able to deliver. Mm. And when we are talking about deliverables, if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have good enough health, if you don't have good enough intellect, if you don't have good enough capacity, Nigerians wouldn't vote for you. Right. So we, we're coming. We, this is we're at the end of the discussion. Thank you very much indeed for sharing all that with us. But just before you go, and at the risk of making you repeat yourself, overall, what sense did you get of what matters to Nigerians most with regard to the 2023 election? Is it? INEC conducting a proper election? Is it the, the quality of the candidates? Is it the fact that they, they're not sure whether their, their votes are going to count or they believe they're going to go or whatever? I mean, what's your sense in conclusion? Nigerians believe that their votes will count. They believe that at least 65% of them says INEC is capable. And I'm sure they are going to take going forward, take a reference from the elections in, in Oshun State. And if they are willing to cast their votes, they are also willing to stand by their votes. And fortunately, the new Electoral Act has given them a boost of confidence in uh, supporting the fact that their votes will count. Mm. As such, the Nigerian that is going to be the president must tick all the boxes of competence, of intelligence, of capacity, of commitment to do the needful, to drive around the uh, economy, to make sure that the security issues are no more there and to make sure that Nigerians are brought back together. Those are the major things concerning to Nigerians. Well, I mean, it has been a most enlightening interview with you and um, well done on, on carrying out that survey. Thank Dr. Ulubenga Ogunfemun is uh, one of the people behind the survey uh, that we were just talking about. He's Director of Research at the Africa Polling Institute. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.